It's Flow 1071, Colorado's throwback hip-hop and R&B station, and right now, it is my great honor. This is sincerely a privilege. We welcome onto our station right now, Daryl McDaniels, a.k.a. DMC of Run DMC fame, one of the absolute pioneers of hip-hop. D, what's up? What's happening, man? What's going on? I'm just sitting here in uh, New York City, 95 degrees weather, and I got a little cold. Hey, man, don't worry about that. It's just an honor to have you at all. So let's get right to it. Let's start with some questions, maybe start in the present and work our way back. You just released a book. The book is entitled 10 Ways Not to Commit Suicide, and it's a very personal book. It talks a lot about your experiences and some of the things that you've gone through. Can you maybe give us a little background on all the things that happened in your life that brought you to the point where writing this book was something you wanted to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what happened was uh, before Jeremy Master Day got shot and killed, uh, Run DMC was, you know, running around being Run DMC. And every day I would wake up and have this funny feeling like, this something ain't right. There's something missing. And I went through my life, you know, Alfred and Ben is my mother and father, Run and Jay is my friend, Alfred is my brother, I went to St. John's University. This thing called Hip Hop comes over the bridge from the Bronx, me and Run make a record, we put Jay on as the DJ, changed the life, changed the world. Something is missing, and it basically got to the point where this feeling within me became so uncomfortable that I didn't want to live no more. And I said, just in case I do die tomorrow, people know the DMC story. You know, first to go global, first to go platinum, first to cover Rolling Stone. Everybody knows what Run D and J did. You could Google me, Wikipedia me. But nobody knows about the little boy Daryl. So I said, just in case I do die tomorrow, because it's weird that I'm thinking that I don't want to live no more. And it wasn't because of what I accomplished. There was just something in me personally, spiritually, and deep down in my soul that was missing. So I said, if I die tomorrow, I know my birthday is May 31st, 1964. So when I write this book, I want people to know some details. I call my mom up. I asked her three questions. How much did I weigh? What time I was born? What hospital? She told me. I left the phone. An hour later, she falls back with my mother and father, and this began the catalyst of events for me to discover who I really am and how to heal myself from depression, suicidal thoughts, anxiety, and low self-esteem. She calls back with my father and says, it was a month ago when we brought you home and you adopted, but we love you, by." And that's how I found out. And even though that revelation was traumatic, it filled a void that was a missing piece in my identity. Once I found out that I was adopted, I started drinking 24-7 a day because I didn't know how to deal with all these emotions and feelings that I was having. It was kind of like I was a 35-year-old grown man going through the emotions. You know, when kids get these emotions, they, they, they get shocked by them. Why am I feeling like this? Am I wrong to feel like this? I feel weird. People are going to tease me. This and that. So low self-esteem, depression, um, 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 self-awareness, all of those issues I was experiencing at age 35, while I'm being DMC, the most mighty entity in the hip-hop and um, in, in music, you know, in, one, in the music genre. So make a long story short, when that happened, Jack Daniels and Jim Beam became my best friends. I got to the point where I said, if I don't get away from Jack and Jim, I'm going to die. When I went into therapy, when I went into rehab, I discovered the real tarot that was always there. That was there in the beginning before all of this. So what I had to do at that point is go all the way back to 1984 and see where I stopped being me just because of this DMC stuff. Once I removed the alcohol, once I removed the false smiles and lies and feelings, once I was able to tell the truth about who I am, I'm able to look back at um, certain circumstances and instances where I pushed the real Daryl out and wanted to substitute them with alcohol and substances. So I wrote the book basically because over the last couple of years, especially after Jam Master Day died, um, my partner Ron, he said on TV, he had six or seven successful years of TV shows. Everywhere I go, I get this question. So while you're in the work house and what you've you been up to, I would tell people truthfully, yo, I just got out of rehab. Um, I'm in therapy. Or um, I just found out that I was adopted. And people shop. They would go, oh, my God, that's terrible. But then in the same breath, they would go, could you come talk to my daughter? Could you come talk to my son? Could you come talk to my father? Could you come talk to the fireman? So whether it was about um, um, adopted, whether it was, was about being a foster kid, whether it was about being an alcoholic, whether it was about substance abuse, or whether it was about depression, I realized me talking about what I'm really going through the same way all these years on those records I talked about things were was good, when things were good, 
Even me talking about the bad things that I've been going through as a normal person is having a great effect in the good of people's lives than any happy rob that I ever could make. So this book is basically, wow, damn Master J passed away, he runs on TV, DMC, what's been up with you? And I've been revealing that it's dark, um, it's deep, but it's real. And I'm an example of the steps that you need to take to heal yourself. Man, thank you for sharing that with us and the listeners in such great detail. I really appreciate it. Now, the audio version of the book also has some music. Is that right? Music that's part of a new album you're working on? Yes, yes. The audio version has a, a, a single that's off uh, one of the new albums that I got coming forth. Um, uh, the new album, the, 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 the metal, it's a hard rock metal album that deals with uh, black and white relations, suicide, death, substance abuse, politics, economics, and social issues. It's a, it's a, the album is kind of like the theme song to the book, but um, the name of the song is Suicide. And like I said, the first healing step for you to defeat depression, substance abuse, anxiety, and low self-esteem is to admit it's okay to feel this way. So the music that I'm making now is going to be no holds barred, straight up proof about how I feel and how a lot of people in the audience is feeling on a political level or a social level for all, all the people out there. You could go to YouTube. I did a lyric video of a song called Flame. You could punch in Flame, F-L-A-M-E-S, BMC featuring Miles Kennedy. It's a song produced by John Moyer of the rock band Disturbed. And we're talking about all these gun issues that are in our country. Straight up, straight to the table. Time to stop, because all these bullets being let loose is unnecessary. So the new music will be no different from what I've always done um, early in my career, but I'm not at the same place that I was when I was 26 years old. There's different issues in the country. There's different, different issues in my life, and there's also many different issues in the issues of the people out there in the world. And I want to be a spokesperson for them, not just me alone, but for them, because that's really missing in music and in art today. Getting back to your writing, your writing acumen does not end simply with novels. You actually have a comic book company that you started a couple years ago. The name of the comic book company is a clever acronym based on your name, obviously. DMC, Daryl Makes Comics. Man, how's that going? Well, that's really funny. Um, about two years ago, I went for a music meeting because um, I was helping a friend shop one of their artists. So, you know, if he calls, he's never going to get a meeting at these record companies. But if DMC calls, hey, come right up. So to make a long story short, I got to meet with uh, Rick Morales, who was up at Atlantic Records. Uh, he was uh, part of CD Records, Eminem's uh, company, the whole rise of that empire. So I go to meet with Riggs, and I sit down with him. And he, and he said these words. He said, yo, D, before we get in this meeting, man, you was like my superhero, man. He asked me what was it like when I was a kid. And I was like, well, as a kid, man, I was a straight-A student. I went to Catholic school. I was always on the honor roll. You know, I'm very proud of that. And all I did was read and draw comic books. And when I say comic books, we ain't talking about music. We sat there for three hours, and we talked about comic books. I mean, the artist was totally pissed. We didn't care nothing about him sitting in the room. But at the end of that, he heard what, you know, comic books is my first love. Before, before rock and roll, and then before hip-hop came in, my first total existence of every fiber in, in my flesh and every, in, every energy and all the energy in my soul was from comic books. So it was like, Dee, so we should do a comic book, man. I think that'll be really cool. You know what I'm saying? It'll, it'll, it's creatively, um, um, creatively, it will inspire and motivate people in the same way. This is what got me to do it. The same way everything you've been doing with your music all over these years, you can do with this comic book. So to make a long story short, in the comic book, it's Daryl McDaniels, everything that's true about me and in my life, everything that you go through, everything that kids go through, everything that Muslim people go through, everything that my grandfather goes through, everything that we go through as a people and human beings is in the comic book, except the difference is this. In this universe, my superpower is hip-hop and rock and roll. In a comic book, it's not a rapping superhero. It's Daryl McDaniels. I graduate from St. John's University. I become a teacher, but I'm the guy. I'm the superhero running around fighting all the bad guys. So 
everything I've always done with my music, I can do in this medium too and more. Why? Because kids, adults, and everybody can hold it in their hand. It's pictures and visuals to stimulate the brain. I want to do what art, creativity, and music was put here to do, which is inspire, motivate, educate, and, and, and entertain people. I mean, D, you become quite the renaissance man. I mean, you've tried your hand at so many different things, express your creativity and your passion in so many areas. I just have to commend you. Not a lot of people are willing to explore those different parts of their personalities like the way you are. Thank you. So, well, well, you know, what, what it is, I just want to say, what it is is um, the alcohol and the substances was replacing all this. You know what I'm saying? I got to the point where, man, I'm rubbing. What else can I do? I thought all of when, when when I lost my voice and when I wanted to kill myself, I thought the only thing I was put in to do was be the king of rock. No, king of rock is part of that. You know what I'm saying? But there's so many other things within me and within within all you listeners out there. Anybody, you can defeat substance abuse. You can defeat alcohol. You can defeat depression. You can defeat anxiety. You can defeat low self-esteem. Because 99 times out of 100, you're not the problem. It's all those other knuckleheads and situations around you that you feel that you got to act a certain way to please them. The most powerful feeling that will have you conquer anything in the world is how you feel about yourself. If you're getting bullied, if you're gay, if you're lesbian, if you're transgender, um, if you're black, if you're white, if you're Muslim, if you're Catholic, if you're Russian, no matter what people think about you, who you are, and where you came from, the most important feeling to get in touch with is what makes you feel good. And what makes me feel good is writing a rhyme for the sake of writing a rhyme, not to sell a record. Doing a comic book for the sake of telling a story and not selling having the best-selling comic books. I, I've, I've never done anything artistically to, 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 for a game. I did it because it's a way of expressing who I am. And once you get in tune with that, let them tease you about your freckles, let them tease you about your funny sneakers. Let them, I was a little kid. Glasses is cool, man. People tell me, yo, dear, until you came along and started wearing a bunch of glasses, I used to get picked on. I used to get caught four eyes every day. But now the kids get teased because glasses? No, because glasses is cool. Comic books is cool. Glasses is cool. Violin is cool. Being a scientific nerd is cool. Everything that's nerdy and geeky is gangster. And you can tell the world DMC said it, and if you've got a problem, come see me. <laughs> man, what a great message. Thank you for that. All right, D, I have to ask you one more question. I promised myself if I ever got you in an interview, I would ask you this. I've always been fascinated, mesmerized, by Run DMC's rhyme schemes, their patterns. The way that you and Run went back and forth. The way he would say a line, you would say a line. You jump in with a word, he jump in with a word. I'm honestly not sure we've ever seen anything like it in hip-hop. Or at least we've never seen anybody do it as well as you guys. Can you take me behind the scenes and describe to me the process the anatomy of a Run DMC song. How did you guys come up with that style? Did one guy come to the other with a verse and say, okay, I want you to say this word, I'll say this line, or did you sit down in the same room at the same time and kind of compose it together? I'd be fascinated to know about the process of a Run DMC song. That's, that's a really great question. I mean, it, it's funny. Salt and Pepper did it too. You know what I'm saying? And now, since Run DMC had such wide exposure, they think we created it. We actually got it. I'm going to name some groups, and people could go on YouTube because their music is up there. We actually got these groups. The Furious Five, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the Cold Crush Brothers, Treacherous Three MCs, and the Funky Four Plus One. And the Crash Crew, we got it from them. But how it works is this. You're around your friend, and he's saying his lyrics so long that if he shut up, you know what word is coming. So we just that spontaneous, you know, that spontaneous um, 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 collaboration of, it's almost like I know all the runs miles, he knows mine, so if I shut up, I know he can be right there and he knows what to fill in. So it, it became a more thing where even though our rhymes started out separate, we set our rhymes around so, we set our rhymes around each other so much that his verse and my verse began to merge. So at the drop of a dime, what we demonstrated on Peter Piper, it went from just taking, uh, you know, he would take a whole line originally, but we were around each other so much saying our lyrics that it went from 
two and three words all the way down to one word. But it's something that Run DMC didn't create, and uh, um, I'm glad you asked that question. I want people to go to listen to Grandmaster Fast and the Furious Five Super Rapids. Go listen to the Treacherous Three New Rap Language. Go listen to uh, um, the Cold Crush Brothers, and go listen to the Funky Four Plus One. But Salt and Pepper did it. Naughty by Nature does it. It wasn't something we created. It's something that grew out of you're around your people and you're creating so much. You know everything. I know stuff he's about to say before he's even about to say it. So it was just that um, unified, close collaboration of just knowing what the next man is going to say. Well, it speaks to your humility that you would give credit where credit's due. But in my opinion, nobody's ever done it quite like you and Run were able to. Ladies and gentlemen, Daryl McDaniels, a.k.a. DMC from Run DMC. The man, the myth, the legend, author, musician, philanthropist. He went to St. John's University. Thank you, Daryl. I really appreciate it, man. What an honor to talk to you. You can catch up with DMC on Facebook. He has his very own dedicated page, which is Daryl DMC McDaniels. Daryl spelled D-A-R-R-Y-L. Also, be sure to follow Run DMC and keep up with one of the legendary, most impactful groups in the history of music on all their social media pages. Man. Woo, just bucket list. What a treat, what an honor, what a privilege. It's the White Shadow DJ Beds here on your throwback hip-hop and R&B station, Flow 1071.